All right, welcome back, physics. We are starting a new unit on light, and in our last unit, we talked about waves, specifically waves that carry kinetic energy, like uh, sound, or waves in water, or waves on a string or a rope. These are what we call mechanical waves. They carry that kinetic energy. There was another kind of energy that waves can carry, and that is electromagnetic energy. They don't need a medium, right? Anything that's mechanical, if it's carrying kinetic energy, it needs to have mass that's moving. So for a mechanical wave that's going to be water or the mass on the string that it's moving, uh, if it's a slinky, right, it's the, it's the slinky itself that's carrying the energy. In electromagnetic waves, nothing is going to be carrying that energy. The energy is going to be simply moving through space, and it's in the form of electric and magnetic energy. They're kind of the same. We'll talk about that at the end of the year, actually. So to get us started, uh, let me present this, actually. There we go. Okay, so introduction. Uh, so light is that uh, electromagnetic energy. So where does light come from? This is what we want to think, be thinking about. How does light work? Are there different kinds of light, and what are some sources of light? So this is what we're going to be going over as we go through this PowerPoint here. Uh, please follow along with the notes that I provided. It's just one sheet of paper, um, and you can fill it in in the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Right? There's going to be a lot of different kinds of light. We've mentioned this a little bit before in our unit on uh, the baking cookies, and we'll do some more here. All right, so light. The first thing that's kind of strange about light is that they are particles, but they are massless. So uh, usually we think of particles like uh, particles in the air, they have mass. Light, on the other hand, does not. We call these photons. And they're particles, but they also travel in uh, like a wave, right? Wave-like patterns at the speed of light. Because they have no mass, they have no inertia, and therefore are able to move at the fastest speed possible. So we've just labeled this the speed of light. So the wave has two components. It's got an electric component, and it has a magnetic component that gives us electromagnetic radiation. Radiation just simply means it's radiating. It's going away from a source. So when you hear radiation, you normally think we're, we're thinking gamma rays, we're thinking really dangerous things. Um, radiation is specifically a designator for things that are radiating going away from a source, like light. So light is emitted when atoms or electrons release a packet of energy, and it radiates away. The image here at the bottom, actually, let me get my laser pointer. There's actually a video. There's a camera that's so fast that it's able to track the light as it passes through this Coca-Cola can. So I would look that up uh, if you have a moment. It's really sweet. Um, but we have... Uh, certain amounts of energy. So that's why we call them packets. Um, this is actually where we get um, quantum from, right? If you think about qualitative versus quantitative, quant. So quantum is just meaning that there's a number to it, a packet, an amount. All right, so here we have the sun, and it is giving off what's called black body radiation. So anything that has thermal energy is releasing that energy through uh, electromagnetic radiation. So that's why you can see me with a thermal camera because I'm giving off infrared light. I'm relatively cool compared to other things. Um, maybe you don't think I'm all that cool, but uh, I am at least thermally. So the sun on the other hand is really, really hot and it is giving off all of these different wavelengths of light. And you can see that there's this dotted line here that's showing the peak. This is represented in your notes as well. So when something is warm and it's giving off uh, light, we call this black body radiation. Okay, so this is why when you have coils on your oven, uh, if you have an electric oven, those coils get red because they're getting so hot, they are now giving off forms of light that are visible. I, on the other hand, I don't have that much thermal energy, so I'm not giving off that much. The sun, on the other hand, peaks in the visible range. So visible light, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with what we can see. So take a moment. You're not going to discuss with your neighbor, right, unless you want to talk with uh, someone else nearby uh, with you. Maybe you're, in a, maybe you're in a call with somebody else. So 
Take a moment, think about how much of each color of visible light is represented on this spectrum. For example, where is red light going to fit? So if we go back here, right, we have all of this uh, side, there's a bunch of different wavelengths. Where do you think red light fits in? Is it going to be over here? Is it going to be right in the middle? Is it going to be on the edge? Where do you think it's going to be? So take a moment. All right. Visible light has a range of wavelengths between three, and that sh uh, should be a mu, so this is micrometers. This is violet. Um, green is 0.55 micrometers, not much bigger, right? It's uh, 0.2 micrometers larger in wavelength, that's green. And then another 0.2 larger is going to be your red. So using your purple, green, and red colored pencils, uh, fill in that range on the diagram. If you don't have those, that's okay. Just fill that in where it is on the diagram, and you'll see that here. Notice, it's a really, really small portion of your diagram, right? We have micro micrometers here, and it's there's the what was it again? It was 0.3, right? 0.3 is just a little bit to the left of 0.5, uh, 0.5, and then 0.75. So this is the full range of visible light. Everything else is invisible to our eyes. So let's start thinking about. Uh, and considering what are those different forms of light that we can't see. So the first one we're going to look at is called ultraviolet light. So ultraviolet, I think you guys are a little bit familiar uh, with this, right? This is what causes us to have sunburns, right? That's what I mentioned here. So it goes from 0.1 to 0.4 micrometers. So this is radiated by the sun, many other objects in the universe, and this is able to get through our atmosphere down to Earth, which is why we can get our tanning and a sunburn. So black light can cause certain objects to glow, used in research and forensics. So when you're when you're shining ultraviolet light on certain things, uh, they will radiate back. Actually, scorpions, if you have a black light, you're out in the desert if you go down to Phoenix. Um, I know you Flagstaffians hate Phoenix, that's where I was born. Uh, but if you go down there, you have a black light, you go into the desert and you have one of those, you will be able to see scorpions because they radiate that light back. So this is uh, these are two images. Here's one with visible light and this uh, this woman is putting on some sunscreen. And so right in the image here, you see it as white and then there's just her face. But here we have an ultraviolet camera. So what this is doing is it's receiving ultraviolet light into its lens and it is um, showing things as really bright as having a lot of ultraviolet light. So you can see the corners of her hands, her forehead are pretty white. They're reflecting a lot of ultraviolet light, whereas her eyebrows and her hair aren't doing as much. And then right, her neck is in shadow, so there's not going to be as much light anyways reflecting there. But you'll notice where the sunblock goes, that is where there is very, very little ultraviolet light coming from, right? It's showing up as black. There's not a lot of light. And so this is actually what sunblock does, is it is not, uh, it is not allowing that ultraviolet light to hit your skin. It's absorbing it there instead. And this is why sunscreen is really, really important. It takes away the ultraviolet light. It saves you from having um, skin cancer in the future or even just a sunburn. Okay, so that's our first form. We're going up actually in higher amounts of energy. So to the left here, as we move farther to the, wait, 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 is that right? Nope, there we go. Yeah. No, I can't, I can't tell from here for some reason. I can't, my mind can't figure it out. Anyways, as we move to the left on the screen, um, we are getting higher and higher forms of energy. So ultraviolet has more energy than visible light. X-rays are going to have more as well. So X-rays, they're in nanometers now. So we're another, uh, we're another step smaller. So it's from 0 0.01 to 10 nanometers. This is really, really tiny wavelengths. Thankfully, the Earth's atmosphere blocks X-rays. And this helps us out because x-rays are really, really dangerous. So we can use them in small amounts for helpful use. Uh, something that I learned in my medical physics class in college is that there's nothing, uh, there's no form of radiation that's dangerous. There's only dangerous amounts of radiation. So when you're air in airport security or you're getting an x-ray at the hospital, right, those are safe uses 
of x-rays. If you've gone to the dentist, you might notice that the dentist or the uh, dental hygienist, they go behind a, uh, a wall. That wall is lead lined because you're only in there once every two years or once every six months, right? So you, uh, you're there twice a year and you get two x-rays. And the x-ray is like that, right? It's a snap. But for the dental hygienist, they're there, and let's say they see uh, 15 people in a day, um, right? They're, they're there for maybe 30 minutes with you, so they can maybe get in to an hour, right? They're going to be receiving 15 snaps of x-rays every, every day. Um, so that is thousands of x-rays that they're going to be receiving compared to you, who's only going to get two x-rays per year. So they need to protect themselves because they're going to have dangerous levels of x-rays compared to you who has safe levels. Okay, so, right, can cause cancer at higher amounts. In low amounts, we can detect cancer with it, right? You'll get an x-ray. Uh, you can figure it out. We also use um, MRIs, which is a different uh, kind of detection technique and doesn't use uh, electromagnetic radiation. All right, so using x-rays, we can see black holes, right? Seeing black holes seems like a bit of an oxymoron, doesn't really work. So black holes, they have this, what's called an accretion disk. If you've seen uh, Interstellar or and I guess any other movie that has a black hole, usually there is, around a black hole, there's a bunch of matter that is spinning really, really fast. The gravity is so strong that that matter is moving really, really quickly and is giving off X-ray radiation. Um, so here is the center of the Andromeda galaxy, our closest galactic neighbor. And here at the center of the galaxy, you can see some stars with some uh, gas as well. And we have, right, we can see there's these two black holes. There's these, there's a lot of X-ray radiation coming off of these. Regular stars don't give off this much amount of radiation. So something must be there, but it's not giving off visible light for us to see like a star would. Can I, can I, uh, oh, there's a, there's a video. Here, I want to show you if I can find the video. Let's exit out of here. All right, let's go to, um, x-ray black hole. And let's see videos. Oh, is it not there? You know what? I think I'm, I think I'm in the wrong spot. We'll go back to the we'll go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, here we go. Uh, gamma rays are next. So gamma rays, uh, they are the highest form uh, or highest energy form of light that you'll have. So moving to the left here, you're going to have high energy, right? The wavelengths are getting shorter and the frequencies are getting longer, right? As the wavelength decreases, the frequency is getting higher, right? Those uh, peaks and troughs are going to be closer together. All right, so gamma rays, they are less than 10 picometers. So that is uh, 12 uh, spots moved to the left for the decimal point. Most energetic form, again, it can't pass through the Earth's atmosphere. Really, really helpful. Uh, we use uh, gamma rays actually to destroy cancer cells. So gamma rays are really, really dangerous because they can split apart DNA this is why you can get cancer from gamma rays, but you can also destroy cancer cells with gamma rays. There's a really cool, um, there's a really cool instrument that doctors will use, and it is able to form the specific shape of your tumor, if you have one, in three-dimensional space. So what it will do is, let's say we have a tumor here, and it's going to go all the way around so that it's focused on the tumor itself, right? It's here, it's focused on the tumor, and then it's over here, it's focused on the tumor as well. But the, the flesh, your body, that's all in these other places, aren't going to be getting as much uh, gamma radiation. Only the tumor is going to be getting that amount. So hopefully it breaks apart the cancer cell DNA only and not the rest of your... Uh, rest of your body. So this is generated by radioactive atoms, right? right. These are um, these are atoms that are giving off gamma radiation, and uh, with nuclear explosions is one way we can do it. We can also use other atoms that are a little bit more controllable to uh, for doctors to use. All right. So now it's time to move over to the right. We have 
infrared light. We've talked about this a little bit in our unit on uh, baking cookies and cars. Infrared light is the light that is primarily responsible for you feeling uh, heat. Infrared light, it's much bigger, from 0.3 to 300 micrometers. Notice that this crosses over a little bit into the visible light spectrum, so some of this will um, transfer that thermal energy to you. So body temperature emits infrared light, which is what night vision goggles can detect. We talked about that a little bit. Um, your cell, Some cell phones, cameras, can detect uh, the infrared light coming from the TV remotes. So if you have a TV remote at home and you have your cell phone, turn on your camera and you might be able to see the light that is coming from your uh, your TV remote. Okay, so try that at home. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of cool. So you, you, you click it, you see that light bulb, nothing's ever there. Um, uh, you've never seen anything do anything because you've hit a button based on that light bulb. It's actually infrared light that's coming off of it. And I think you're, uh, some of the cell phones might work. All right, so here's a couple of images. Here's a guy. He's got a mirror in front of him. And what we're going to do is, obviously we can, sorry, we can obviously see him through the window. So light is able to transfer uh, through the glass pane. But when we turn on our infrared camera, he's completely not there, right? We can see his arms, but we can't see his face. Infrared light is absorbed by the uh, window glass pane. It does not go through. Now, here's a trash bag. We can't see the person behind, but when we turn on the infrared camera, obviously we can see him. Now, notice his face is the warmest, his nose, not so much, right? He's got a shirt on, so the shirt isn't gonna be as warm as his body, right? His hair as well. Cool. Next one is microwaves. Infrared light, by the way, can get through our atmosphere. That's why we're able to feel warm in the sun. Uh, microwaves are next. So they have a wavelength of one millimeter to one meter. These are units that we're familiar with, right? Nanometers, micrometers, picometers, those don't mean nearly as much to us. But here we're dealing with something on a human scale. So this is blocked by our Earth's atmosphere. Actually really helpful. Um, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So waves... Uh, these waves were discovered in 1864, and then, about 100 years later, we made the microwave oven, your favorite uh, quesadilla, quesadilla maker. All right, we, just, we made this around World War II. Um, so what you can do, actually, uh, if you look at your microwave, we just got one for a new place. You might notice that I'm in a new spot. Uh, my wife and I, we just moved in the midst of the coronavirus. Great time. Uh, if you go to... If you go to your microwave and you put a couple of marshmallows in there, you can actually determine the speed of light. Remember, the speed of light is frequency times wavelength. So if, uh, or sorry, yes, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're able to put your marshmallows in a line on your microwave, you can determine where the peaks and troughs are, and you should be able to... Uh, figure it out based on the frequency of your microwave. So if you look at your microwave, there should be a sticker somewhere, and uh, that'll tell you the frequency, sorry, it'll tell you the frequency on that sticker, and then you can determine the wavelength based on where those mic or where those marshmallows are, um, where those marshmallows are melted. I'll actually give you extra credit, and I know not a lot of people watch these, so I'll give you extra credit if you try this at home. Okay, If you can determine the uh, speed of light using frequency and wavelength, then I will give you some extra credit. Um, actually, I'll give you 20 points of extra credit if you do this. I need picture evidence, though. Okay, And uh, to do this, I just need you to uh, send me a picture uh, through your Google Docs. So share that with me. Label the document uh, speed of light, marshmallow speed of light, and I'll give you those 20 points. Okay? Uh, we also use this in map mapping uh, galaxies and astronomy. So uh, the first thing was this, uh, this is an antenna, actually. And what they discovered at the beginning was that there was a bunch of static coming from everywhere. And they originally thought it was pigeon poop all over. Maybe that was something, and they cleaned it up. The... Uh, static was still there, and so they realized that they had actually come upon something. They had found that the universe, the edges, are, 
edges isn't a great term, but from every direction, we were getting microwave radiation for some reason. Uh, later on, we developed uh, some more uh, microwave receiving telescopes. And so we started seeing that there's like this strong center line and we're seeing this microwave radiation. This is actually from the edges of the universe. If you watched, uh, if you took your notes on the Doppler effect, this happens with light too. As an object moves really, really fast away from us, the wavelength of light is stretched out. And so originally, this light was really, really energetic. It was really, really highly energetic, probably in X-rays and gamma rays. So the wavelengths were really close together, but as that, uh, as the universe has expanded, those wavelengths, just like the Doppler effect, are stretched out and the frequency is lessened uh, and the wavelengths are increased and eventually we get microwaves. So at some point in the future, we'll get the next kind, which is radio waves. So if, as the universe expands more and more, it's not going to be microwaves, they're actually going to be radio waves. And here's your little note in the corner, right? As we move to the right, nope, yeah, that way, I got it, I got it. As we move this way, uh, we're going to have lower energy, we're going to have longer wavelengths, and lower frequency. So long, low, lo low, long, low, and uh, moving this direction, we're going to get high. I'm sorry, my, my camera is blocking that, isn't it? Let me, let me move myself up here. There we go. Now you can see that. Sorry about that. So uh, you'll have high, short, high. Okay. So radio waves is the last thing. Uh, we have a wavelength of 0.2 to 600 meters. These can be as tall as buildings. They are the least energetic form of light. Maybe you didn't know that. Radio waves are actually light. They're just really, really weak. Um, so we're being bombarded with radio waves all the time. We're receiving a lot of radiation from them. Lots of radio particles hitting us over and over again. But they're so weak, they're so low on energy, that it really doesn't matter. These can pass through Earth's atmosphere. Um, we use them a lot, in, or we use them for a lot of different things, right? Airplane communication, some of the early Wi-Fi was using uh, this kind of radiation. Moon bouncing, we uh, bounce things off of the moon. FM and AM radios uh, are using different wavelengths or frequencies of radio waves. Stellar objects like our sun give off radio waves too, and we can hear them. So let's, uh, let's take a moment and listen to this. It's gonna not be very, very nice. So that, that gives you an idea. Uh, these pulsars are, are spinning around, they're pulsing, um, and they're giving off these radio waves. This is the, the sound that you hear when it comes off of them. All right. So uh, just to finish up here, what's one aspect of the spectrum that caught your interest? What are you curious about? Um, so light is a really strange thing. What's something, especially at the beginning, some of those first things that I said were really strange compared to what we've learned about light so far. So what's something you're curious about? I'm going to post that as a question uh, to finish up this set of notes. Uh, further thoughts for, for reflection. What types of advances could help make solar panels an efficient form of energy production? So right now, they are absorbing mostly, if I remember correctly, or at least last time I checked, green light. So what might make them more effective? What would be a good form of radiation to capture? If we're on Earth, what light could we capture and what would be good forms to capture? How does the spectrum of light make space colonization tricky? So think about that as well. Okay? All right. Uh, with that said, I will see you guys next time.